Hello, my name is Anna Leitreiter. I work for the World Feature Council. And the World Feature Council is an organization that works internationally on policies. So our main mandate is to identify policy solutions that have proved successful across the world. So for my field, that would be renewable energy and climate protection. And one of the policy measures that really proved successful were 100% um, renewable energy targets. Renewable energy itself is a technology that provides solutions, but what is the policy framework that actually enables us to harvest these benefits? And there are several legislations, like feed-in tariffs, that already help to increase the share of renewables. But how do we actually make us independent, unlock us from the fossil fuel resources on this planet? And the only way to do that is to set 100% renewable energy targets. So I'm speaking today to you about the global movement of 100% renewable energy pioneers that you can find really on all continents. And uh, when we see this field from a broader perspective, we can start with looking at the renewable energy market in general. And the good news is 2015 has been a record year again. Renewable energy are really at the forefront of uh, developments at the moment. And uh, the generating capacity saw its largest increase ever in the last year with uh, 147 gigawatt added capacity within the last year. This also um, is reflected in the investment um, that goes into that sector. And we now have more than 280 billion US dollars being invested globally in that sector. With increased investment came an increase in technological advancements, cost reductions and also jobs. There are now more than 8 million people working in the renewable energy sector. And this actually is uh, quite a contrast to the depressed labor market in the broader energy market. All of this shows that the question is no longer whether renewable energy play a role in the energy sector, but rather how can we best increase the current pace to achieve 100% renewable energy? with a full energy access for all people in all sectors, so that it actually benefits today's and future generations. In fact, current developments prove that the future of renewable energy is still a fundamental choice, not a foregone conclusion of, te of technological and economic trends that I was just mentioning. Despite all records that we could see in the renewable sector, much more is needed to actually put the world on the track to 1.5 degrees, which all nations agreed on in Paris at the last climate conference. Government leadership continues to play a key role in the growth or for the growth of renewable energy. The good news is we don't have to reinvent the wheel. As of 2016, so only this year, we know that there are 173 countries across the world that had renewable energy targets. And more than 140 countries had support policies. And in fact, it is the cities and communities who lead the way. In my home country, Germany, more than 160 regions, counties, communities and cities have set 100% renewable energy targets and more than half of them have already reached them. More than 50 cities across the world have set 100% renewable energy targets. Many of them actually with a remarkable size. Just to name a few of them, Frankfurt, Vancouver, Sydney, Copenhagen and islands like El Hierro in Spain or Samsø in Denmark or just recently Hawaii in the US have become a trendsetter in this movement. Because for them, being independent from energy imports is actually quite a cost-effective solution. 
they are at the forefront of climate change because they really feel the impacts already on the islands with raising sea level and uh, extreme weather events. So taking action and 100% renewable energy is that kind of action is really important for them. Finally, whole nations like Cap Verde, like Denmark, Iceland, Sweden, Costa Rica, they all prove that renewable energy technologies are viable to power our societies. Now, this is a very encouraging movement and it's actually quite exciting to speak to these people who are managing these transitions and who have done these transition plans to implement their visions. The organization I work for, the World Future Council, we are analyzing these policy frameworks from these pioneers and see what can we learn from them and what can others maybe replicate in their jurisdictions. So we have looked at some of these uh, jurisdictions that I actually just mentioned. And indeed, there are five policy recommendations uh, that we can draw from that. And the first one, make energy efficiency a top priority. So energy efficiency is part of the equation. And this is something that many people forget. Moving towards 100% renewable energy also means looking at how do we consume the energy? How is the inf infrastructure of our energy system um, developed at the moment or established at the moment and how can we make it more efficient to reduce the amount of energy we need to produce from renewable energy sources. Secondly, electrify the heating and cooling and the transport sector. We often forget that 100% renewable energy is not only about power, it's not only about the electricity that we consume. Actually, the larger share of our energy is used in the heating and cooling and in the transport sector. But make sure that this electricity for the transport sector does not come from coal and oil and gas and nuclear power plants, but actually from renewable sources. So it's important to look at the, the chronological order of this. Third um, policy recommendation is actually really close to my heart and something that I want to talk a little bit more in detail um, at the end of this presentation, which is to maximize the benefits for people and businesses and local governments. So engage them and develop new business models to ensure that the benefits are shared among many and not only among few. This means that Policymakers on the different national levels need to develop policy frameworks, legislations, which include new actors in the energy sector, rather than strengthening only those who are already in the market for many decades. And this goes hand in hand with the fourth policy recommendation that I would like to share with you, which is educating and informing citizens and businesses about the opportunities and the, op and the possibilities to engage and uh, to educate about renewable energy as a new technology um, in our society. And finally, that goes to all the policymakers out there, adapt an integrated approach to fiscal, economic and energy policy. Many people think 100% renewable energy, this is dealt with in the Ministry of Energy or sometimes Ministry of Environment. But what we actually need to see is a policy dialogue, an inclusive and integrated approach across different sectors that look at how can we enhance renewable energy? For example, taxation plays a huge role and is usually dealt with in a different department. Um, and only through that we reach a coherent and successful 100% renewable energy strategy. When we list all these cities and communities that I just mentioned, it often comes across as if they are comparable, as if 100% target is the same as another one. But this is not the case. And I just want to give you one example from my own country, Germany. So Munich is one of the cities, one of the bigger cities that you probably know from the Oktoberfest, that have set a 100% target. 
And their strategy is to invest in, for example, offshore wind parks at the coast of Scotland or big solar PV power plants in Italy and Spain to basically offset their um, consumption. Frankfurt, different city, also in Germany, also having a 100% renewable energy target, they come from a different approach. They have analyzed what are the resources within our territory and as the next step, what are the resources in our so-called hinterland with our surrounding municipalities to cover our energy supply with renewable sources. So they have analyzed what do we need, what is our consumption after doing all the efficiency measures, and then how can we meet this consumption with uh, renewable energy sources within our region. And obviously, this is quite a difference, and this has different implications for the regional development and for the socioeconomic potential that can be harvested within this jurisdiction. So all of this shows you that 100% target in one jurisdiction may not be comparable and equal to another one, which is not necessarily a problem, but it's just something that we need to be aware of when talking about this. And this shows that there is a clear need to measure and assess progress towards 100% renewable energy. For example, a policymaker in a council wanting to to embark on this pathway and set these targets and implement roadmaps, there needs to be guidance on what does it actually mean. And this is something that uh, we as the World Future Council with our partners actually globally in the global 100% renewable energy campaign are doing at the moment. We are looking at what does it mean to become 100% renewable energy in a local government engaging citizens and empowering new stakeholders to engage in the energy system is one of the key criteria to first of all reach 100% renewable energy target and secondly to ensure that this serves um, the development in the region and creates socioeconomic value. Let me give you an example from my own country Germany. Wolfhagen is a small idyllic municipality in the middle of Germany with about 13,500 inhabitants and this municipality actually faced some challenges a few years back. They had uh, an increasing number of energy mandates to take care of, they had high expenditure for energy imports to cover their consumption and all of this led to a financial burden in Wolfhagen. So they figured that solar and wind technology could actually provide a way out of this problem. The municipality founded a citizens cooperative in 2012 and now this cooperative actually holds 25% of the municipal utility. So basically the citizens own a quarter of the local utility. And this is a win-win situation because the utility gained additional capital from the cooperative for realizing the renewable energy projects, but also the energy consumers of the, of the utility became cooperative members and the customer loyalty to the utility was strengthened as well. And finally, the civic members, so the citizens of the cooperative, gained direct influence in the utilities' organizational decision-making process, which uh, brought um, or which led to higher acceptance and more engagement, more informed decision-making. Last but not least, the citizens actually benefited monetarily through this engagement. This makes the whole case really interesting because it actually shows that engaging participants does not only lead to more acceptance but creates economic value. With this presentation, I hope I sparked some of your thoughts and uh, initiated some discussions among you, your friends and colleagues, and uh, maybe you're interested to engage in this movement and be part of it. 
and uh, learn more about more examples that you find across the world. Together with our partners from the Global 100% Renewable Energy Campaign, we are identifying these and visualize them on our map, which you can find online. But also, we produce a lot of different um, communication material for you to learn more about what have all these pioneers been doing. So for this, check it all out on our website, worldfuturecouncil.org, or also on our campaign web website, which is go100re.net. You can also find us on Twitter and on any other social media channel. I would be more than happy to engage with all of you in the coming weeks and months.